What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video. We're back here today on Madden 25 here for another rebuild and we find ourselves back in the AFC conference talking about a down bad horrendous team right now is the Jacksonville Jaguars. Last year as we know they looked like a lock and loaded playoff team and they just proceeded to lose so many games down the stretch and they're off to an 0-3 start to start this season. They are down bad right now so let's go ahead and jump in and rebuild the Jacksonville Jaguars and Madden 25. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like in this one and subscribe if you're new to this channel. As always, greatly appreciate. One cool thing that Madden has finally fixed, by the way, we have draft classes now. We actually have real draft classes. I'm super excited about that. Uh, you know, usually I've not been a guy that watches a lot of college football, but this year that's been a lot different. I think towards the end of last year, I watched the Natty and I watched the playoffs last year and I'm a little bit more into it. So I know a little bit more about college football players. I'm not going to pretend that I'm an expert now or anything like that, but I do know a little bit more so i downloaded the most downloaded draft class let me know if there's a better one out there but yeah i'm excited about that to say the least but let's go ahead and look at this jaguars roster and figure out what is going on with this team one thing that it looks like to me right now is trevor lawrence maybe feels less confident in himself at this moment uh but if you look at this offense it looks solid there's a lot to like here of course evan ingram has missed some time this season but you have gabe davis who's fine he can be hot or cold at times christian kirk who's been solid ever since you signed him Ryan Thomas, who you got out of LSU, who played with Jaden Daniels out of the draft. He's been solid so far to start the season. You have ETN still, Dang Bigsby. So there's a lot to like on this offense. And on the defense side of the football, maybe a little bit more work needs done over here, but you still have uh, Josh Allen. I didn't realize he changed his name to Heinz Allen or whatever that. I've never seen that before. That's cool. Andre Cisco, Fuicide, Huluacan, Devin Lloyd. Uh, you have Ronald Darby, uh, Campbell. So defense definitely looks like it needs a little bit more work, not going to lie. But we're going to go ahead and simulate year number one with this team. We're 0-3 to start the season. So I can't imagine that this ship is going to turn around anytime soon. I have a feeling we're probably not going to be very good this season, I'm going to assume. But uh, just because obviously I feel like we're not going to shake an 0-3 start. But we'll find out. I'm going to go ahead and simulate the rest of this season. And we'll see how this Jaguars team finishes out. When we did this the other day with the uh, Bengals, of course, they did not make the playoffs. So I doubt... That will be the case with the Jaguars here as well. So at the end of this season, things actually went a lot better than they did in the Bengals video. I believe in the Bengals video when we started from 0-3 and, and I said the season, we finished at like 6-11 and 11 or something like that. This time we finished at 9-8. and 8. So it looks like we turned things around a little bit. That obviously would be really cool for the Jags to do that. Unfortunately, it does not mean we made the playoffs though. This is the AFC. So the AFC, of course, is a very stocked conference. So I don't know. I don't think you can really expect, you know, I'm not too surprised that we missed the playoffs at nine and eight. So let's take a look at the player stats and let's see what we got going on here. So offense was 18 in NFL. So like I said, I liked what we had on the offense side of the football and defense was top 10 as well. So, I mean, you really like what you've seen there. I just don't think we were able to outdo the 0 three start Trevor Lawrence with 27 and 16, uh, ETN 17 touchdowns, 1300 yards. So Christian Kirk and the thousand yard receiver, Brian Thomas, 800. So not bad at all. Pretty solid season despite the 0-3 start. I'll definitely take that. And we do have room for improvement in the offseason, most particularly on the defense side of the football. I think we'll probably prioritize focusing on defense because defense is the team or is the side of the football that I think needs a little bit more pieces. But again, they were top 10 defense this year, uh, which is interesting to say the least. Unfortunately, we just weren't able to, like I said, escape the 0-3 start. So I feel like if we didn't go 0-3, there was a chance we could have been a playoff team year one, which would have been exciting. But unfortunately... Not the case, but I'm so excited to actually have real draft classes today. That's going to be so much fun. You have the Ravens and the uh, Cowboys in the Super Bowl. Very interesting. All right, let's get into the resigning stage as usual. We'll see how much cash space we got going on. And uh, so we have $49 million and we'll see who is important to keep or let go. So you have Andre Sisco at 25 years old. You have Devin Lloyd here as well. That is a fifth year option, which I will accept. Uh, we got uh, Trayvon Walker, which is another fifth year option. Uh, I know out of the gate, he was damn good, but I haven't heard much about him since. So I feel like maybe the Jags made a mistake by not taking Aiden Hutchinson instead, but I'll accept it anyway. Cam Robinson at 29 years old. Mac Jones, I'm not worried. Ooh, Sheriff is definitely a must resign. Uh, if we're going to keep our offensive line as good as possible, I definitely think Sheriff needs to be part of those plans. So I'm going to go ahead and resign him. Former Washington football teamer, obviously. I don't think he played with us when we were the commanders. I think it was a little too late if I remember correctly. But uh, Cam Robinson, let's go ahead and re-sign him as well. 82 overall left tackle isn't terrible, so I'm fine with just re-signing him. And just kidding, he wants to play for a new team, so he's ready to move on. And Andre Sisko for depth, I'm fine with just re-signing him too if he wants to just come back. Okay, that's cool. So we only have $32 million in cast space, but there is the potential, of course, to 
maybe cut a couple of guys. We're not going to worry about, you know, franchise that tagging Cam Robinson, Mac Jones. Like, I don't know, like I could give him a backup quarterback deal if he wants, but he's going to go to free agency. That's fine. All right. Let's go look and see if there's any salaries that we feel like are necessary to cut. And then we can figure out if we can free up more money. So team salaries, let's take a look at what we got going on. So savings wise, we're not going to be restructuring any contracts. That's for sure. So Evan Ingram is making a lot of money and Christian Kirk are making a lot of money. So that's two of our offensive weapons. So for now, I won't touch them. But if I feel like I'm in a bind where I need to do something, maybe we can look at cutting one of them. But I'm not going to just do it right now. I'm going to wait that out if I if i even do that i don't even know if i would actually do that but left tackle becomes a need and then whatever we need on defense of course is still definitely a need all right so let's take a look at the lineup and we can figure out what we're gonna do in free agency so left tackle is the main thing i'm looking at brian thompson ended up being a star development wide receiver kirk's uh, developed into a superstar so yeah only thing we really need on the offensive side of the football to me is just a left tackle everything else i think i'm cool with rolling with i mean etn even is up to a superstar x factor and Lawrence developed back into an 81. He was like a 76. So I don't even think, other than left tackle, I low-key might not do anything on the offense. I might just be all focusing on the defense. So on the defense side of the football, uh, Fusai Luwakon went up to a superstar X Factor, which is awesome. Adula went up to star. So definitely, and then Darby went up to a star. So we were just a damn good defense. There is still a lot of things to like here. Maybe another middle linebacker, another corner would probably be like the main thing we need. So let's go see if we can address that in free agency and uh, upgrade a couple positions here. So only two offers in free agency here. I'm going for Paulson and Debo to upgrade our cornerback room and Cam Robinson, just trying to bring him back. We'll see if he does sign. Right now we're his number one option, but the Rams are tied with us. So we'll see what happens with that. Obviously landing the corner would be my main thing. So we do get a corner, which is nice. We don't walk away with a left tackle. Garrett Bowles is still sitting here. So getting him as a replacement seems fine on a one-year deal. This is like all of our cap space. So if he signs that, I'm happy with it. If he doesn't, it's no big deal. So I'll see if he signs with us. I doubt it. And he does not. Are you still mulling offers? But we're not, we're not his number one offer. So I'm just going to back out of this. The Cardinals have come up on, on, on their offer. So is there anybody else we can grab at tackle? The Robinson decides not to sign with us. Josh Jones is here. Um, you got Walker Little here. What about right tackle? So right tackle. Morgan Moses, the vet, I guess is fine. We can get him probably somewhat cheap. Getting him on a one-year deal seems fine, I guess. And we could still draft one, but the Jet or the Commanders are coming in hot there. So maybe we go into the draft needing a tackle and a middle linebacker. The, those are the most two needy positions. So yeah, I, we get our we get another corner, which I feel like we definitely need it. Javarius Ward would have been nice as well, but I went for the younger player. So getting Paulson Adebo, I think, is awesome, and uh, he will be a major upgrade to this defense. Love that. Uh, so yeah, middle linebacker becomes a massive need. He's still looking to safeties, like no position still off limits technically, but maybe like we won't worry about like a right end or a right outside linebacker because we got superstar X factor, X factor there's X factors there if I should freaking speak correctly, but let's head to draft night and then we get to actually draft with real players in real life. I'm excited. So we'll be picking at number 17. So I can't wait to kind of see how the board falls in this draft. So number one is going to be Shador Sanders. Jalen Daniels goes two. Jack Sawyer goes three. Okay, just kind of taking the board uh, in a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's take a look at what's available to us. So we got uh, Glenn Haywood. Don't know much about him, not going to lie. Javier Alden. We said we needed a uh, left tackle, and this might be our guy. Uh, talent is not, not there. We don't know what his talent is, but let's take a look at him. Javier Alden out of Clemson, too. I mean, Trevor Lawrence, ETN's college. I mean, a lot of connections there. Top fits, Jaguars, A pass block, C run block. Um... He looks, he looks exactly the, like the kind of guy we need. So I'm going to go ahead and draft Javier Alden here with this pick. Hopefully it ends up being a solid selection. Number 98 in true value. Okay, not great. He is hidden dev though. So you know what? We got a hidden development left tackle. I can't complain too much about that. So feeling good about that first round pick we just selected. And now we can go to the second round. So Quinn Ewers went to the Rams. Very interesting. All right, so in the second round... Let's see if we got maybe a middle linebacker on the board because that was the other need we kind of needed. Uh, we do have like James Lewis. Uh, don't know where he's from, but pass coverage is his archetype, which is something we could use. Uh, we also have Kennedy, uh, who's more of a power rusher. And then we got quarterbacks, which I'm not taking any of the quarterbacks. We don't need that. Um, all right. So James Lewis, I guess I'll look at. So A pursuit, B tackle, uh, A to C zone coverage um a play recognition this guy looks pretty solid as well i think i might go ahead and take him here in round two um he is out of georgia georgia produces really solid players so give me james lewis 
out of Georgia. Ranked number 171 in true value. Drafted at number 49. He is hitting dev, though. So, I don't know if every player in this draft is hitting dev or not. Uh, but we are hitting on every pick so far. I feel solid about that, even though the value wasn't exactly what it needed to be. All right, so we'll make this last pick in round three. And we'll let the assistant GM take care of the rest. All right, so this is kind of up to whatever we want to do. So, we got D-tackle, which I actually don't mind taking another D-tackle. We got a free safety. So, I'll probably look between two of these guys. So, Mitch Dixon, I'll start with. We got B finesse, B finesse moves, B power moves out of UCF. And we got, uh, all right, B awareness, B play rage. Okay, he looks solid. I don't mind that. We might look into that. And then let's take a look at the free safety before we just, you know, lock and take that selection. Okay, so C zone, C tackle, A hit power, C man coverage, uh, F kick return. Uh, that doesn't really matter too much. I kind of like the other guy. I think the other guy looks just a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and take a D tackle here. I know our D tackles that we do have are currently a little bit older. We have, of course, uh, like his name is escaping me right now, but he played for the 49ers. I can't remember his name for some reason. I'm top of my head. Uh, he is in dev. Again, I don't know if everybody's in de development in this draft. Maybe that is the case, uh, but I've hit on every pick so far, so I can't be too upset, which is nice. Uh, it'd be funny, though, if every single pick was, you know, uh, hidden dev and it doesn't really matter, but I kind of doubt that would be the case. I assume that wouldn't be the case, but... Feel solid about the draft. Uh, we'll go take a look at what our lineup looks like going into year two. So here's the lineup going into year number two. Something tells me that draft has every single player's hidden dev because almost every guy looks like we drafted his hidden development. So maybe I shouldn't be using that draft class going forward because that's not something that I totally agree with. Uh, but it's a lesson learned today, I guess. So we got uh, Alden at left tackle. We drafted in round one. I was very happy with that selection. Looks like they took us a running back in round two or, or not round two, but... A running back in the draft who ends up being a 78 overall not too shabby and then defensively this is where i kind of know because we got literally like two three other guys that we didn't even draft that probably went in later rounds that ended up being hidden dev so something tells me again i could be wrong but something tells me that almost every player in that draft is hidden dev or something uh but whatever it is what it is so i feel solid about what we we're able to do eric armstead was the name i couldn't think of earlier i don't know why uh, but yeah, really solid draft, really solid free agency, even though we only did like two things in free agency. Or no, one thing. We also we only signed Paulson to Debo, right? So uh, let's take a look at the schemes. Even though, you know, whatever we ran last year seemed to be successful, but it looks like things have changed. So I'm going to go with West or the West Coast zone run. And then we do want to run a 3-4 because it's kind of where our defense is set at. Although 4-3 looks like it'd be good. What about 3-4? So 3-4 actually isn't our best fit. Base 4-3 is interesting because I kind of like... No, I think I'm going to run... I think we got to run the 3-4 still. That's kind of where our defense is set. So I'm going to run that still because that's what I've drafted based off of. But if we did run a 4-3, that would... You know, we'd have a lot of depth at linebacker. Uh, D, I mean, yeah, we have some D tackles, I guess, I could play. But yeah, I think we stick with the 3-4, even though it's not the best scheme fit. Uh, so we'll go ahead and simulate this season. We will see how things go, I'm assuming... We, uh, you know, maybe, may, I'm not going to say I assume, but I think there is a chance we could be a playoff team, but we'll find out. Last year gave me some optimism that could be the case, but you never really know. They're actually literally unbelievable. We went 9-8 and eight again and missed the playoffs again. So missing at 9-8 and eight two years in a row is kind of funny. Um, you know, last year it seemed like warranted based off the 0-3 start, but going 9-8 and eight again just to miss definitely sucks. Not going to lie, but at least we're over 500, I guess. I mean, we could take that as a little bit of a... A win, I don't know. But offensively, we're 19th and fell again. So things seem to go, be going well in the offense still. Defensively, we were 18th. So defense fell off a little bit. not Nothing too crazy. But 29 touchdowns with 4,100 yards from Lawrence. You had ETN still having a really good season. Uh, you had Gabe Davis, Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, and Brian Thomas all do really solid still there as well. Uh, defense side of football, you had uh, eight and a half sacks from Trayvon Walker, seven and a half from Josh Allen, four and a half from Eric Armstead, and three and a half from Mason Smith. Interceptions, you had four from Devin Lloyd, two from Fuasada Luakon, uh, two from Lamar Hill, one from Tyson Campbell, and one from Paul Sanadibo, who is our free agency addition. Okay. Well, uh, again, disappointing to say the least that we're not in the playoffs, but it looks like we did have uh, Javier Alden. Looks like he is a superstar potentially out of this draft, which is fun. Maybe even an X factor. We'll see what uh, we'll see if that is the case or not. But getting straight in the off season because that's where we need to uh, continue to improve. We'll start with the resigning stage. I know about both Evan Ingram and Christian Kirk. I think are going to be free agents. Two guys I want to bring back. I assume we'll have a little bit of money open up, so we're going to have sixty million dollars in cash base. So that's nice to have. But let's get straight into the resigning stage. You have the Vikings and the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. A lot of fun there. But all right. 
and let's get straight to negotiating so uh Travis Etienne is also free agent Christian Kirk's a free agent Evan Ingram's a free agent Anton Harrison fifth year option I'll accept and then uh Devin Duvernay I'm not worried about him Darby okay so it's only our three uh, Mitch Morris I guess is our center definitely kind of sucks to maybe lose him but he's regressed at this point so Etienne is obviously a no-brainer we got to bring him back although we drafted a running back who could be good uh Etienne's a superstar X factor like we got to keep him uh Christian Kirk superstar as well so keeping him I think would be necessary um we do have depth at wide receiver Evan Ingram same thing keeping him around I think makes sense as well even this offense oh he's gonna test free agency Evan Ingram uh, no I don't think I can franchise tag him so I guess I'm gonna be gambling with him entering free agency unfortunately so we're gonna have about 30 million dollars in cast base uh going into free agency and we'll kind of see what we need to do so offensive line will be good other than center now and then tight end will be a hold on a hole on offense all right so let's take a look if we take a look at this uh, lineup to see who kind of upgraded, obviously. So, yeah, the running back we had ended up turning into a superstar. Uh, Brian Thomas still an 81. Christian Kirk, 86. Gabe Davis has improved. Uh, Alden is a superstar. And then we do need a tight end. Although we do have Brendan Strange, who I believe is a little bit of a young tight end for them. On the defense side of the football, you had uh, Lewis, uh, Reese, all developing, and Devin Lloyd's up to an 86. Nice. Then Eric Armstead, Josh Allen, Trayvon Walker, all developing still as well. Okay, so not bad. Uh, we don't have a ton of money to work with so on offense like i said it's the center and the tight end on defense you know we can look at safeties which wouldn't be too bad to look at uh, you can still look at a number of things on the defense but i do like what we've done so far all right let's go into free agency and let's see if we can get uh we have not loaded a draft class yet for this upcoming season so andrew is going to be too pricey obviously i just want to bring back Evan ingram he has no other offers so if we could just bring him back that'd be nice i'll go for him and then I'll go for center, and I think we'll continue to attack. Uh, all right, so we got Garrett Bradbury and free agency. Their position is a little lackluster. I guess Mitch Morse would be our best option if we get him for the low. I guess I'll bring him back, but I don't know if he'll accept that. The Vikings are coming in as well. All right, so let's look at safeties on the D in uh, free agency. It's not there. Corners, you got uh, Kendall Fuller, about. D lines so left in. You got Cameron Jordan. You got Mitchell, Michael Pierce. Jermaine Johnson's interesting. Uh, we do have Trayvon Walker though. Um, and then Mosley, Ivan Pace. Our linebackers are good right now. Uh, yeah. So I think we just kind of focus on getting these guys in free agency. At Brock Purdy, have a couple interesting players to look into. But let's see if we get Evan Ingram and Mitch Morris just to come back. Offense has been good with them, and we are going to get Evan Ingram to come back. Don't know if Mitch Morse is going to come back, and he does. So we get both of them back, and now we'll head straight to head to the draft. I do need to choose a draft class, so I'm going to do that right now. So jumping into this draft, we have pick number 16. Let's go ahead and see what we can snag here. So we got a left tackle. We got a quarterback. We got a left tackle. I'm going to look at the strong safety here, though, and Josh Selvey out of UC or USF. And I do believe getting a strong safety, who looks incredible, by the way, is probably the right way to go about things. So I'm going to go ahead and take Mr. Josh selvi here bring him in number two in true value drafted him at 16 so i think we did a damn good job there so that's a great first round pick i'll probably just pick in round two and i'll let the assistant gm take care of the rest so i feel good about that first selection and now we can go into uh the second round so let's see what we get here in round two who's available so we have a quarterback again i'm not worried about a quarterback um wide receiver left tackle um you got a free safety down here so i wouldn't mind taking like oh that's another Elon Selvi, are those guys related or something? Uh, I believe didn't we just take a guy named freaking Selvi? Or am I tripping? Um, you know, Keelan Selvi, B hip hour, B tackle, C zone. I gotta do something. I'm taking him. I'm taking him just because I'm pretty sure I just drafted his twin brother or something. I'm just kidding. I don't know if it's a twin brother or not. Uh, but I gotta see. I'm not bugging, right? Like, what did I? Hold on. I'm not bugging, right? I definitely took draft board. Can I not go to who I took? Unfortunately, I don't know how to do that. Okay. Well, whatever. I'm going to let my assistant assistant GM take care of the rest. And I'll just let the draft board fall how it may. So, very interesting. But all right. I'll see you guys at the uh, with the lineup going into next season. So, offense looks exactly the same. I don't believe I'll be using the draft classes that I used in the next video. Every player should not be hitting dev. And that's just basically what I'm seeing. It's just kind of dumb in my opinion. So, I will definitely not be using those draft classes going forward. On the defense side of the football, uh, we did. I was not tripping. Selvi and Selvi. So maybe these guys are related. I don't know much about them if they are. Um, that's interesting. That's all I'll say. We should have drafted another corner. That might have been something we should have looked into. But yeah, 
looking good across the board i feel pretty solid about what we're looking like we're gonna simulate season three and i have to hope this year we finally make the playoffs we've went nine and eight the last two seasons kind of get out of mediocrity and make the damn playoffs so at the end of the season we do finally make the playoffs by winning one more game than we have the last two seasons and we get the Bengals in the wild card round it's funny because we just played them the last week of the season they just dominated us 39 to 19 so Hopefully that doesn't end up being the case when we go in and play them in the playoffs. But let's go ahead and take a look at the player stats. So offensively was ninth in the NFL. So offense has been good throughout the video. Defensively um, was 28. So defense got worse, which isn't great. 37 touchdowns, eight interceptions. ETN with 12 touchdowns, 1400 yards. Uh, Christian Kirk, 1200 yards and 21 touchdowns. Awesome. Defensively, you had uh, nine sacks from Josh Allen, nine from Trayvon Walker, five from Mason Smith and four and a half from Eric Armstead interceptions three from Devin Lloyd two from Paulson Debo one one and one not enough turnovers in my opinion but we'll go ahead jump in to this first playoff game against the Bengals Joe Burrow versus Trevor Lawrence once again hopefully we can take them down in the first round so here we are in the playoffs going up against the Bengals in the wild card round they beat us last week in the regular season we are going to start off with the football here scoring on the first drive would be awesome we only get a field goal but we come away with an interception going up 10-0 would look good and we do just that we get another interception so oh that was our rookie as well but we don't score off that turnover 13 to 7 we're gonna allow the Bengals to get back in this game aren't we uh 20 to 10 so two possession game right now we get another stop 27 to 10 we could get some sweet revenge based off what happened last week and we are gonna go up 30 uh it's a one possession game though and we got a score here we do uh and i think that might be all she wrote we are going to the next round so the Bengals might have beaten us last week in the you know regular season finale but we come in wild card round and beat them in cincinnati and now we're going back or now not we're not going back we're going to the next round so in the division round we get to play a division rival that being the indianapolis colts they went 13 and 4 and if i remember correctly when we were doing the Bengals video the colts are the team that ended our video they beat us in the afc championship pretty easily so we'll see how this one goes i mean division rival games you know a lot of crazy things happen we get an er interception on defense from paulson debo to start this game which is nice and we are going to score off of it so that's a great start to this game uh 14 to zip so looking good so far they are going to score a touchdown and all they need is a stop and we get another interception defense is playing out of their minds they're causing a lot of turnovers we got to start with the football here we are going to score 28 to 14 two possession game 28 22 okay five minutes 22 seconds left we got a score here and we don't okay three minutes and 28 seconds left i kind of want to just ice this game away 28 22 let's go score here let's end this game and let's move on to the afc championship there's three minutes and 28 seconds left i'm going to come out here and try to move the ball downfield and get another point score on the board so i bro i was so confused on what button to click there for some reason i don't know why i was like looking at it and it said why but at the same time i don't know there was just so many buttons that looked dumb you know what i'm gonna redeem myself here don't worry about it i got it all right so let's go christian kirk maybe or we got b which i do like i had to wait i had to throw it early i would have let that route develop even more but i was having someone coming like very i was about to get sacked all right let's go to tight end attack one of my favorite plays and i'm gonna see if i can get evan ingram open or christian kirk downfield i love this play because it's pretty you know, you usually get... Ooh, I'm just going to go... Okay, let me never play again. Just let me never play again. Um, Let me just go back to just watching what happens. And we are going to allow them... You know what? I just said never play again, but I'm going to redeem myself. That was terrible. I'm going to come out here and redeem myself. That was just the worst drive possible. I got so much pressure. And I'm going to make... I'm going to make up for it. So, Evan Ingram, that is what we do. That is how we play. All right? That last drive, ignore what I just did there. That was terrible. I'm going to go five wide here, and we're going to get some more yards going downfield. So we got Christian Kirk, Brian Thomas, ETN, Gabe Davis in the middle, Evan Ingram over as well. I'm going to go to Gabe. Bro, I cannot. What is my O-line doing, bro? I have, like, no time to throw the damn ball. Come on. I need some protection. I need some freaking protection. I'm trying to let these routes develop, and I don't even have time to let them develop, man. All right. We got to get a quick. I mean, I guess we're going to be playing the quick throw game. So. I'm gonna go to B here, and that is beautiful. Nice throw on the run by Trevor Lawrence. We're in in Indianapolis territory. All right, so let's go. Um, let's go to a little bit of a read option. This will be interesting. Uh, so we are going to read the edge here. Um, do I want to opt out of this? I might actually come out of this play. 
let me go to pa crossers and let me see if ingram gets open or if thomas finds himself in the end zone um it's not there i might just nope i have to throw this away lawrence is not fast enough gotta throw that away second and ten all right well we gotta get a first down so let me go back to the play of all plays tight end attack let me see if i can get evan ingram or christian kirk maybe i can look at the other oh i actually can just scramble this one i think uh, Evan Ingram's there though. So I'm just going to take that and that's going to be a touchdown. Nice throw on the run by Lawrence, by the way. He is balling with those throws. Okay. Can we get a stop on defense? Yes. That should be your ball game. And just like that, the first drive was horrible, but I come out here and I win it for us. We're going to the AFC championship. And now we find ourselves in a playoff rematch. This is the last time the Jaguars are in the playoffs. The last playoff win, of course, uh, in real life was against the Chargers, who blew a 27-0 lead, man. That was with Brandon Staley as the head coach still. Obviously, the Chargers have John Harbaugh now, so things could be different. But AFC Championship time. Let's see if we can come out here and get to the Super Bowl, shall we? So we're going to start with the ball. We do not score. They do. 7-0. to uh, Are we going to get stumped in the AFC Championship like we did in the last video, too? Is that how this video is going to end? There's going to be two AFC championships in a row where we just don't put any... Like, we just forget how to play football once we're in the AFC championship to me. Like, that's what it's looking like so far. And we are not going to go to the Super Bowl. This video is going to end on an AFC championship disappointment. We come out here and forget how to play football just like we did in the Bengals video too. That's actually crazy. So, we get all the way here and we get absolutely smoked. But I'm going to come out here and try to score at least on a drive to end this video um oh i actually think i have brian thomas for a touchdown he is wide open bro uh that was not a touchdown though unfortunately lawrence just not just doesn't know what he's doing i guess in this game i don't know our offenses look the lead all playoffs and the chargers just come out here and make us look silly so it is what it is um we are going to i mean it looks like man again uh so let's see if we can maybe uh it's not there yeah, I'm fine with the sack. Literally nothing was open. Like, literally not a single thing was open, unfortunately. Um, play action bubble is interesting. Let's see what we do with this play. I'm just coming out. I'm just practicing at this point. Oh, we got a free rusher. I'm going to throw this away. Again, I don't see anything. I could have tried the middle route, but it, it was kind of double covered. So, yeah, there was nothing there. Uh, they were covered. I mean, maybe that's why Lawrence can't. I'm not seeing anything. Unless I'm just not good at scanning the field, which is definitely possible. I won't rule that out. But... Brian Thomas, once again, beats his man. It's that simple, Lawrence. That's all we need to do throughout the game, man. We're gonna get another chance. Nope, that's gonna be your ball game. So, two AFC Championship appearances in a row. Not to the Super Bowl, though. Unfortunate. I think we did a solid job. I will never be using those draft classes again. I will say that right now. Not every single player in the draft should be hidden dev. I think that's kind of dumb. But that's a lesson learned. Uh, we keep taking lessons and we adapt. We'll just keep changing things going forward. Why did they show me throwing it out of bounds as a highlight? That's actually insane. But all right, guys, I'm going to end it there. I'll see you all in the next one. This is Crushables. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.